I think they miss the salt because they're so used to it. <laughs> Well, uh, we, I guess we have to be led to the caves. Okay. The uh, innkeeper uh, will slowly lead you, just looking back. Are there, are there many exits and entrances? Uh, he will shake his head and say, No, it wasn't that big of a, uh, of a mine, not this one. Uh, especially not after, like, he wiggles his hand, whatever, <coughs> whatever the earth replenished or what have you. Like, as far as I know, there's only one entrance. I mean, there might be something else out there. I've never been in there. It's haunted or something. At least that's what superstition says. I don't believe in that, but... All right. Then, like, he looks back at the, like, the massive waves of blood assaulting the sand. He shakes his head. I think we deal with the haunting. I will deliver you folks to another map for the occasion. You guys get so much extra awesome mappage. Yeah. <laughs> mappage. Mappage, yes. <laughs> uh, the grass around here, pretty dry, and uh, for the most part, not exactly lively, but with the exceptionally cold winter, as you crunch through, it uh, is maybe like 20-minute walk away from Kilwell. You can look back and you can just see the blood in the water. And uh, Death Speaker for a brief moment says, I hope that doesn't attract any more sharks. To which, like, the innkeeper looks completely horrified. Uh, should stay away from the water a couple of days, maybe. Or perhaps leave altogether. Might be good idea, yes. We don't have anywhere else to go. Many people do travel to Newport. It is the city of opportunity, supposedly. Those slums it, there aren't as good, they're just as bad as what we've got going around here. And these are homes we've built for for decades. I do not believe that the, the slums in Newport have sharks coming out of the water and killing people. He doesn't and have a counter. All the other things. Does not have a counter for that either. At least you could send the little ones, if there is any here. Well, uh, slowly, the caretaker. Slowly nod and say, maybe Godfrey can uh, and, uh, negotiate that with, with the government. Yeah. But eventually, uh, for as long as it takes for you guys to load the map, uh, you will pass the 20 minutes and uh, reach the exterior of the cavern complex. Uh, it is a rather sturdy uh, rock wall, uh, and through which you can see a narrow passageway, which the innkeeper will point and say, that's the way in. I really haven't been much further than this, so I can't tell you what to expect, other than the fact that it's neither said to be haunted or really just abandoned. I've, it's already been picked clean of worth long ago. I can't say you'd find much in the way of interest. Was. Do any of you guys have manacles with you? Manacles? Yeah, like handcuffs. <laughs> I have rope and chain. Alright. We should get a couple of pairs of those. <laughs> so we make some manacles? I don't think we make them now, but it would be nice to have. For now, Can I guess we'll just have Couldn't Tempest make some manacles? You need a crafting <laughs> table for that. <laughs> no. Snap your fingers, Tempest, and just pull them out of your you'll, head. You'll find one in Good Springs. <laughs> you can just punch a tree and, and make a crafting table that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Unexpected error. They said the the thing was there was no iron in here anyway. So. Yeah, the the ore in here is uh, this place completely dried up. I'm getting a bunch of errors here. Well, you had that happen before, and then you disconnected and reconnected a week or so ago, and it fixed itself. That's probably going to happen again then. Maybe. So what? What's our plan with Domino if if she is in here? We knock her out and then we question her. Why question her first? I mean. True. Yeah. Works better. But like, if she's like, I I don't. If I go with you, I'm dead. We're like, well, that's. If, if you don't go with true. us, you're dead. 
You know, let, let's let's burn that bridge when we come there. We, like, we promise you safe conduct, and then we don't do it anyway. <laughs> I mean, she has crimes to answer for. If she doesn't come with us, then we are free to proper come. proper trial. Yeah. Although we have no real evidence except for like we have a a boy's te testimony was scared. Always the strongest testimony, yes. It, you know, you, one of the things that you guys didn't do, that you discussed doing, was asking, like, who killed Feral Durhal? Well, I mean, that would still just be our word. Well, we can't, but then, but then you would know for sure. Instead of thinking it was like Domino's twin, their second cousin once removed or something. You no, know, she would probably tell us that that was, that was it. And we probably wouldn't believe her, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <she got> out <laughs> of Come on, it was my twin. Yeah, right. Twin magic. I'm also to a Hurum's twin. I was come here to beat you up. <laughs> so. Ah, uh, can you kick me from the server? Sure, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad to fulfill your fantasy agreement. But you are. <laughs> bow, chicka, chicka, bow, wow. Ravinger. Could I have let Ravinger probably stay in the village? Sure. I don't, I mean, we're going up into like, like mountainous area, it seems. Hilly area. Nah. Yeah. Alright, this is better. I always go get him if we need him. Leave <laughs> all the horses you guys bought behind, it's fine. The panic villagers will take them and ride away. We'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> you probably would. Mm, yeah. Don't steal a shit. That's a pretty good idea. We killed that blob down there. We're, we're more dangerous than it was. Apparently so. Uh -huh. That's a pretty cool thought, isn't it? What is right now coming for Domino is worse than that thing and the Sahagen. <laughs> or anything else we have won against. We are literally the worst. <laughs> I mean... Also, her? Tempest, don't oh, you want to spend another recovery? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, those don't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> you Damn you. it! Damn it. He, he didn't heal as much as he wanted to. It's one above average, right? Anyway, the uh, world is your oyster. Uh, the innkeep, like, like, looks at you guys and says, like, should I wait for you here? You, like... Is, is the way back easy to find? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, then, you, then it's probably okay you, if you go back. Yeah, you can do what you want. You don't know how it will be. And then, like, begin uh, making his way back rather quickly. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know her that well, but she might have some defenses in place or an alarm system of some kind. Probably. So, we should keep an eye out for those. Yes, that I agree. Are there any signs that someone has been here at all? Well, why don't you make a, any. Are there any signs anyone has been here at all, skill check? Uh, do I, have a, I don't think. Well, maybe in in her work as for for the Black Fang, she occasionally had to track someone, find out signs if they are indeed staying in the building that she thinks that they are staying in. Considering the rural nature of the situation, I'll say half of it. Okay, that was what I was hoping for, to be honest. Plus, mm, <laughs> wisdom modifier. Ugh. Like, maybe. Like, well, you know, you're supposed to fail forward. I agree, you should fail forward. Alright. Well, we go ahead and give you your sign. Is it, is it initiative? Flaring alarm. Nope, that is an attack versus your armor class. As, oh my. Uh, as Aurelia is looking around for a sign, she thinks that someone has been here within a day... And then she hits a trip wire, arrow trap, re smacks out, and hits her right in the shoulder for 20 points of damage. I am quite positive that someone might be in there. Tempest will walk up and think, 
maybe I should take point there, Aurelia. She will do an inviting gesture towards the cave mountain. <laughs> as Tempest <laughs> looks, as his Tempest looks at the arrow bolt of the bed. Yep. <laughs> Yes. 20 will... points of damage. That is a very serious arrow. You want me to do a secret roll for trap seeking them? Absolutely, I sure do. Okay. <laughs> this will be intelligence based. It's roll secret, isn't it? Yes, yeah, slash yeah. roll secret or slash RSEC. Yeah. And do I get one of my backgrounds, the survivor game? Good idea, Drago Trap. Sure. Second, after yeah. the Survivor of the Dwarven Games, it seems fair. Survivor of the Dwarven Games involved a lot of traps, because fuck you. There we go. All right. As Tempest will start sauntering in. I'll let you know when you find something. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Stop there, where you are. Yep. Uh, remind me what your trap sense thing types are whenever I make attack rolls against you. Okay, if a rogue skill check involving a trap is a natural even failure, the rogue can re-roll the skill check once. If a trap's attack roll against a rogue is a natural odd roll, the rogue can force the trap to re-roll the attack once. Alright, you're going to be forcing a re-roll there. That's a re-roll. Uh, it still hits your armor class. A, uh, Tempest manages to find a trap the hard way and takes 21 points of damage as another arrow goes flying out from a well-concealed position and thunks right into Tempest's thigh. Thunk! Yeah! Uh. Uh. <coughs> okay. Mm. They're a bit more hidden than I thought. And, I'll find another one. And uh, <laughs> Tempest at this point is convinced that uh, if he didn't see the simplest of things, he might not exactly see whatever the rest is in this damn place. Uh, you want me to take point then, since... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 please. Please do. Uh, give me a second. Uh, come ah. Uh, ah. Does Bohirim think that this amount of noise would be something... Like, is it echoing down there? Yeah, it's, it could be problematic, yes, with all the yelling and crying out. If you're trying to surprise someone, that'd be a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah, surprise kind of gone now. It is. Let's call her out then. You don't know, like okay. Not everyone. Let's look at the others to see if they agree. Uh, yeah, uh, shrugs. If you think that is wise. Well, what does the death speaker think? Death speaker says, "Well, you don't even know where she's in there or not. You don't even know what's in there. Maybe the thing is actually haunted." Shrugs. Okay. What kind of ghost would put up arrow traps? What kind of ghost wouldn't put up arrow traps? It's got you there. <laughs> that was he's a deaf speaker. <laughs> he knows a bit more about ghosts. Try than... not to lecture me about my field of expertise. <laughs> that was an honest question. Death speaker shrugs. My dead can visibly manifest with the world. Tell us if you see more, Tempest. Uh, Eric, you mind? Uh, I'll walk beside you for this one, but uh, any traps are here, I've not got much chance. Sure. Uh, could uh, Garrick also be looking out for traps? Sure, you can go ahead and roll secret for me as you attempt to look out for traps. All right. Hmm. Do you have a background which applies for this? Uh, you do a lot of traps in your day while you're protecting the fortresses? Because you know... Those crazy gnomes, they like to go in and ruin everything. I mean, he hasn't uh, really disabled any traps, but he has uh, sort of decided where traps should go and uh, stuff like that when uh, sorting out the defenses of uh, Grokheim Keep. Sure, you can use that background with your intelligence modifier to d20 roll. Roll secret. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, wisdom? Intelligence. Oh, okay. Alright, I'll let you know when you find something. Alright. 
Tempest points up north. I think this way might be the smarter one. This. All right. You can stop surfing now. Oh, both of you together! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I love this. Tempest! Next in tile two. Get off my ass! <laughs> the good news is that you found something. The bad news is that you found something. And you know, why not? Did you decide, uh, this can, I'll just make two attack rolls against the both of you. <laughs> this will be against Garak. That will uh, be just enough to hit his mighty armor class. God damn it. And uh, what am I supposed to do oh, again? Like, if the attack roll is odd against you? Like, uh, if nothing? the attack roll is a natural odd roll, I can force a reroll. Because that's going to hit me, so I force a reroll. Right, it's the even one that... Well, did if I reroll? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, that'll hit. Both of you take, uh, as it turns out, both of you decide to step in the exact same place at the same time. Consequently, you both end up hitting the tripwire. And the arrow does a pretty great job of, like, getting you both, like, in the fucking ankles for 18 points of damage to both of you. I imagine it basically just pierced through Tempest's and just went clinking it. Say, so, uh, with, uh, the skill checks that I'm getting from you guys, at this point, like, the, these are, yeah, yeah, you're not that great at spotting traps. Turns out maybe this bounty hunter who, like, lives in the wilderness is pretty good at this thing. Or you guys are just really bad, because none of you beat a DC-20. <laughs> Perhaps. Tempest, you were supposed to stay behind me, goddammit. I slipped. I, I tripped over a tripwire. What do you expect from me? <laughs> stay behind me. <coughs> I need to take 18 points of damage now. Yes. The, uh, the caverns are very narrow. Uh, in the part of the primary reason why uh, the range is... Like, those black bars are there because it's so difficult to maneuver uh, around here. The ceiling is not that much taller than the humans. Uh, so the dwarves can stand around comfortably just fine, you know. Perhaps some memories, some flashbacks of being beneath the ground. But uh, everyone else can certainly, uh, perhaps, is encouraged to feel a little claustrophobic in here. Uh, also, what sort of height does the arrow seem to be in? Is it random, or is it... Uh... Well, let's see. The arrows that were uh, hit out thus far, one hit a shoulder, one hit a thigh, and then one hit both of your ankles. So, they certainly aren't at the same level. Alright. So, crawling wouldn't be a good option. Because then I would just get they in all, the They all seem to be tripwire things. Like, all at all three times, they have been wires attached to the, you know, the wall. Yeah. And all three times, they've been triggered. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about crawling, but nah. <laughs> That'd certainly That's be just... a messy, affair, like a loud affair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like an asshole, asshole in like full one. plate mail, just like starts crawling <laughs> on the ground. Nah, he's a noble. He's beneath that sort of thing. <laughs> Being in the dirt. Yeah. You don't need to stay that far behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Could uh, Dohira maybe put like an alarm thing right here? I, I will also note, by the way, that there is no light in here, just so you know. So, Garak, I don't know whether your eyes glow with like light and power, but uh, there is no light. Maybe? No. Uh, the Garak will light a torch, then. Okay. So, uh, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna put away the weapon or the shield? Uh, he's gonna put, put away the... shield. Okay. No, the weapon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yep. He sent me a message. Oh, it's in the group chat. Not my problem, then. Last panel. Okay. Uh, there is some light uh, coming down this uh, passageway here, apparently towards the west. Right. Um. Hmm. Who will uh, put, like, an alarm on uh, this passageway here? Okay, and you want to use a sprite or just cast, a, cast the cantrip yourself? Cast the cantrip himself. Alright. Seems more reliable. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's a fair point. See here. 
Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. I can go ahead and lay that down. They last one to six hours, so just go ahead and throw me a one d six to see how long it lasts. Also, you're not gonna spend another recovery, Griff. <laughs> All right, it'll last for six hours. Uh, the alarm sprite that you summon just like nods and grumbles about having to do stuff. The tempest take a few just to sort of sit and just fix up <laughs> some of his. Take as long as you want. Yep, tempest will be doing that. Uh, there we go. So. Uh, there's light coming from here. And there's a bit of light coming from uh, this narrow thing here. Any sound? You intend to listen. Yeah, I'll attempt to listen. To attempt to listen? How? Well, <laughs> skill <laughs> roll. <laughs> wisdom based. It would, it would definitely be uh, a wisdom based skill check to attempt to listen to your heart and the surroundings around you. Yeah. It's good that you guys do this whole listen thing now that you've like bumbled through and like so many people like <laughs> screamed and like ah, ah, ah. Yeah, the moment of surprise is gone. We should just go for it. We should, but traps. Well, I mean it's well, you gone can't for hear us. traps, can you? No. So uh Unless it this, is, this is me listening. Can I hear anything? You hear yeah. Tempest having a breather over there and, like, Garak trying to be quiet as he, like, shuffles <laughs> in his massive plate armor. Uh, Garak will put down Stop the torch uh, sort of here it's, and uh, slide it this way. Okay. It's a hand on Garak's shoulder and just nods. So just, 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 just go. Yeah, and he will pull out <laughs> his uh, Warhammer after that. Okay. And uh, step out. Check around the corner here. All right, go ahead and peek around the corner there so I can reveal it for you. All right, uh, this is a very narrow passageway leading into a much wider space. You might be more immediately interested in what's in front of you. This appears to be a large, uh, perhaps like a, you know, brown uh, tarp on which uh, there is weighted uh, metal, specifically gold, uh, excuse me, copper and silver coins. Maybe like several dozen coins just sort of like weighted there in the middle. And the tarp... Appears to be uh, balanced there, or it's just sitting there rather, because there is weight on it. Over here is perhaps the largest chain you've ever seen outside of like a dockyard, and it is strung to either the cave walls just so that uh, it is in such an awkward and horrible position. You, a dwarf hide, would still have to like crouch down and like crawl under it so as to hear him, whereas. Uh, like Tempest and like Aurelia and the Death Speaker, this is really a massive chain. Like you could try to like do a flip over it. You could try to like limbo under it. You could like go prone and like wiggle under it. It's a really damn inconvenient chain. Garrick just. Uh, what the fuck? We just stand there in amazement. Just, what the hell is this thing? And the dummy over there. Uh, Yes, yeah, so that appears to be a practice dummy, and that is a light source, and there's some firewood and coal over there. Alright, so that's probably the place we need to go, but... Hmm. So, should we go in there, or should we check to the south first? But what was that about? The, what was immediately in front of you? Check the south. Yeah, I think so too. Also, the side passage. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> if you want to just take a glance. I'm pretty sure it just goes. Yeah. Oh, goes one down there as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure does. Hmm. <sighs> These uh, caverns do appear to be largely empty, devoid of, like, Nothing but maybe like rudimentary and like broken like pickaxes, like maybe like a bucket that used to have ore in it or coal that's uh, just been left behind, just like left alone in disrepair. Yeah, that's no good. real easy hiding spots in there. No. Just saying, because I need to go get another drink. Yeah. Peek around there. 
it's another passageway. Alright. Looks up to Aurelia. See if she... She's watching this entrance to see if anyone comes storming out. But it does seem appropriately blocked, so pure follow. Seems like a dead end. Uh, this appears to be a large... Not like, like a large, but just like a opening, like a cavernous room where the ceiling actually extends enough that you could like... Well, not you. Like You could like stretch and like reach your hands up and you wouldn't touch the ceiling here. Whereas you could even do that... Uh, outside of that cavernous passage, which just goes to show you how small these passageways are. That the dwarf can, like, stand up on his tippy toes and touch the ceiling. <laughs> Seems a bit weird. Is there anything in the roof? You check the roof, uh, there does not appear to be anything other than, like, some minor cracks by, like, air or whatever, where individuals could, like, you know, like, air, like, can breathe in and out of the cavern or someone could use like gas form like a vampire and escape basically cracks like that yeah there's nothing special on the walls either no uh like old markings where people were used to be like digging out at the walls okay doesn't appear to be a gelatinous cube doesn't appear to be like domino with like a bow ready to shoot you <laughs> So this thing. Could you, hear, do you hear, try to check if see if any of this is illusory? Illusory. You can use a magical background skill check. Yeah, sure. One d twenty plus your magical background plus your intelligence modifier. Sure. Uh. No magic here. This is all. Real. Hmm. Right. Uh, Garrick will try to find a slightly <laughs> bigger rock and uh, throw it here. Okay. Uh, like how big are we talking about? Uh, like. Hmm. Like how heavy Probably. do you want it to be? Because you could find like chunks of rock and whatever. Yeah, like. Probably I... as big as his head, like uh, maybe five kilos, something okay. like that. Sure, Small you can find one. Thunder. You just like toss it onto the tarp? Yep. The entire precariously balanced thing uh, tips into uh, what appears to be a pit uh, with uh, spikes protruding out of it, at least judging by the lumps. It is a rather messy and noisy affair as the whole thing collapses and coins just shower like across like the floor and then like down onto uh, the pit, which is like maybe like three meters deep. Entire just like cacophonous sound of like coins and metal and then like the rock. <laughs> Tempest will just stand there, just totally stoic. I mean, we made a lot of noise anyway. Well, that was an interesting hello. There we... might be a back exit. Can we walk past this thing or? You're, we need to jump. Uh, it's going to have to be an attempt at a jump. Looking up at the ceiling, you do notice that there are bars. If you could jump up and grab those, you could then, like, like monkey bars. You could then, like, pull yourself across to the other side here. But, uh, you doors, would, you doors would certainly have to make the jump. Uh, you non doors yeah. could just reach up and grab them just fine. That's still a strength check. Uh, yeah, could we pull a rope for it, maybe? Uh, we can also give a lift to the dwarf, say, like, here you go. <laughs> Uh, if maybe you, maybe if you could lift Garak. Yeah, sure. <laughs> maybe <laughs> someone else. Maybe someone else should go first. Mm. Tempest, Aurelia, this both seems like your sort of thing. A uh, pit would be a jump thing. It will be. Uh, there will be some challenge to it, only because there's not a whole lot of wiggle room to jump. Aurelia will try jumping. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, and this should totally be a strength-based skill check. To to jump. Yes. Okay. You're using the power of your legs. Uh, considering that Aurelia is usually a, a very, is required to be rather dexterous in a, in a former job, would that background apply? Rather dexterous, but I'm asking for strength. Which <laughs> in includes navigating obstacles such as jumping over things. Sure, you could okay. use that. Uh, as noted, this is a very challenging one, however, Aurelia despite the very small amount of room here, is able to propel her body 
over the distance, which uh, is pretty large when you really can't get a running jump here. And the ceiling is, like, I really pretty much had to contort her body down so her head didn't collide and basically, like, give herself a concussion, then fall into the pit and die. She gets across. It's not that difficult. Come on. Um, she, she will try to, like, is this chain attached to the walls, like, it's attached to either side of the wall, or pretty sturdily, with more chain. How odd. I guess she'll, she'll attach some rope to it and throw it to the others, so they can figure out how to make that help them. You actually uh, think that given how this is attached, it could support even the dwarf paladin's weight. That's pretty good. Alright, so now we need to sort of anchor it over here. I guess Garrick can just hold it for the others, but then it will be a problem for him to get over here. <laughs> 